Another day in the courtroom for comedian Bill Cosby as he prepares for sentencing. And we have new information on a fatal pedestrian accident in Springfield over the weekend. Still a lot of clouds around now, but at least we're dry. We're tracking a soaking rain for your Tuesday when it starts and when it's at its worst with our 20 Today Storm Team Skycast. Live from the 22 News Broadcast Center, this is 22 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 22 News at Noon. I'm Ciara Speller. A two-day sentencing hearing is getting underway for comedian Bill Cosby in a Pennsylvania courtroom. The 81-year-old Cosby was convicted in April of drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constan in 2004 at his home in Philadelphia. Prosecutors hope to call some of his other accusers to paint Cosby as a sexual predator deserving prison time. Cosby could face up to 30 years in prison. Stay with 22 News both on air and online at WWLP.com for the latest on the Cosby be sentencing. We'll bring you the judge's sentencing decision as soon as it's available. A teenage boy is dead and another is injured after an ATV accident in Huntington Sunday. According to Northwestern DA spokesperson Mary Carey, the 14-year-old boy died after the ATV he was driving crashed at about 1.30 in the afternoon on Samson Road. Carey said the passenger in the vehicle, another 14-year-old boy, was taken to Bay State Medical Center in Springfield with non-life-threatening injuries. Breaking news this noon, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is expected to be fired today at the White House after critical comments about Trump. That's according to the Associated Press. It follows reports Friday that Rosenstein floated the idea of secretly recording President Donald Trump last year and that he raised the idea of using the 25th Amendment to remove Trump as unfit for office. Rosenstein has denied the reports. We'll bring you the latest development on the story as it becomes available. A man has died after he was struck by a car in Springfield. According to Springfield Police spokesman Ryan Walsh, the man was hit near the 500 block of State Street just before midnight Saturday. Walsh said the 43-year-old victim died from his injury Sunday at the hospital. The driver was taken to Bay State Medical Center for minor injuries. Springfield Police are looking into the incident. Police in Connecticut have made an arrest in the 2014 stabbing of an insurance company executive who was killed while out for a run in Simsbury. Simsbury police say 27-year-old William Winters Leverett was charged Sunday with murder in the November 2014 death of Melissa Milan. The Windsor Locks man is scheduled to appear in court today. The 54-year-old Milan, a senior vice president at Mass Mutual, was running along a Simsbury trail when she was stabbed in the chest while on an evening run. Funeral services were held today for longtime Westfield School Committee member Kevin Sullivan. A funeral mass was held for Sullivan at St. Mary's Church in Westfield. Sullivan was a 15 15 year member and vice chairman of the school committee. He died last Sunday of a heart attack at the age of 52. Longmeadow police are investigating after numerous bags of narcotics were found on Wimbledon Drive Sunday night. According to police, a resident returned to their home around 930 Sunday night and found multiple bags of powder in their driveway. The Longmeadow Fire Department and the regional hazmat team were called in to help police investigate the substance, which was determined to be narcotics. There were no injuries or symptoms of exposure to the narcotics. Anyone who has information or may have seen something is Asked to call detectives at 413-567-3311. A car was crushed by a tanker truck Sunday afternoon in West Springfield. Look at this image. West Springfield Police Sergeant Brian Pomeroy told 22 News the truck was trying to turn into a parking lot from Morgan Road when it hit the car. The truck dragged the car into the parking lot, but fortunately, no one was injured. Pomeroy said the driver of the car had no visible injuries, but was taken to the hospital as a precaution. 
A man from Pittsfield suspected of starting four fires, including one that destroyed a home, has been arrested while trying to cross into Canada. Pittsfield police say 58-year-old Philip Jordan was arrested Sunday by U.S. Customs and Border Patrol agents at the border crossing at Highgate Springs, Vermont. Authorities had been searching for Jordan since sep Saturday, that is, Saturday night when he allegedly set the fires. One of the fires burned Jordan's own home. Police say his family members lived at two of the other sites where fires were set. Two men were arrested in connection with the shooting of a Boston police officer heading to court today. The Suffolk District Attorney says 21-year-old Raycon Martin of Boston and 35-year-old Antoine Mack of Pawtucket, Rhode Island will be arraigned on charges including armed assault with attempt to murder. Boston Police Commissioner William Gross says the injured officer was part of a team on a regular patrol when he was shot in the calf Sunday afternoon in the city's south end. And there's a lot going on at the Big E after a record-breaking attendance day on Saturday when more than 172,000 people came through the fair gates. The fair is entering its final week of the fair and uh, tons of food is being featured at the fair. Mass Appeal's Lauren Zenzi joins us live from the Big E and has a look at some food options for people with gluten allergies. Lauren. Good morning, Ciara. Yes, there are tons of options here at the Big E for people with gluten allergies, so you don't have to worry. You can still come on down to the Big E and indulge. I have my friends Raj and Christina here. Raj, what do we have over here? Uh, we have ch chana masala, which is chickpeas, or also called garbanzo beans. Uh, they're cooked in ginger, garlic, and onion gravy. And they're garnished with the cilantro. They're mixed with the spices like turmeric, cumin seeds, and they take about three to four hours to cook them. Uh, then we have people who like green. Uh, yes. We have spinach, Go green. ginger, garlic, and onion gravy. And it's also mixed with the uh, homemade cottage cheese. Uh, that's made out of milk. And uh, again, that's been cooked with these spices. So it brings the aroma and the flavor to it. And then people who like non-vegetarian, we have boneless chicken uh, cooked in the butter sauce. Uh, the basic is the tomato puree and the butter sauce, and it's a marinated chicken overnight. And then we barbecue the chicken in the clay oven, and we mix it with the curry. And I think a lot of people, when they think that they are coming to a place like the Big E, they have a hard time figuring out where they get to go for gluten-free options. Now, Christina, I see a lot of yummy stuff over here. What do we have over yes, here? Let's yes. start with this. Most definitely. Great. So this is our chocolate-covered bacon. Um, what? Yes, That's I bacon? know. True uh, Biggie fashion. You got to go crazy, right? A little oh, sweet and salty. My goodness. So this is the chocolate covered bacon. We've got the plain flavor here, coconut, and then we also do a Heath bar flavor. Wow. So different options um, for gluten free folks, of course. Uh, then here is our um, just the meat option. So if you want to skip the carbs entirely, you can do just the meat. We offer cheese and coleslaw on top. Both, of course, are gluten free. Is that free. pulled pork? That's actually the pulled chicken. We, we offer pulled both. Chicken. Yep pulled pork and pulled chicken. You get your choice. So then here is our uh, signature cowboy nacho. We won Best Fair Food a couple years ago for that. Um, so this is the pork option. Uh, we've got corn chips on the bottom, obviously making it gluten free. Um, and then we do the homemade pulled pork, cheese, sour cream, and a little bit of barbecue sauce on top. That is incredible. Well, you just said bacon, so yes. I just said hooray. We are live celebrating life here at the Big E. Lauren Zenzi, 22 News. And now, the 22 News Storm Team Forecast. All right, so if you were up early enough with us this morning, we saw a glimmer of sunshine for about 30 to 45 minutes. Then the clouds came in from the east very quickly. And uh, we've been mostly cloudy ever since. There are still some signs that the clouds may break apart a little bit more by the end of the afternoon. It's just not going to be that bright of a day, though. So don't get too excited about sunshine, but a few breaks of blue sky here and there certainly possible. This is the view from our Chicopee Sky Cam outside our Twenty News Broadcast Center where we're also mostly cloudy. Temperatures have been cool as well with all the clouds around mid 50s all over western Massachusetts with some low 50s in the Berkshire. So really not much warming thanks to all the clouds and you can see them here in the gray. This was 909 this morning as the clouds thickened up and uh, here we are now at 1209. There are a few breaks in the clouds already starting to show up, uh, but these clouds are coming in from the east and as I move the map, there's a few more breaks in the clouds, uh, especially north of Boston that could uh, trickle in and give us a few bright spots later in the afternoon. But through the early afternoon, we're going to stay like this. Mostly cloudy now in 56, 60, mostly cloudy at 2, and then
then we try to get some partial sunshine here late afternoon, early evening. Just don't get too excited about it. 62 at 4, 60 at 6. We've got a soaking rain on the way for tomorrow. We'll show you when the heaviest of it is likely and when we could warm up to near 80 later this week with our 22 New Storm Team 7 day forecast. In New Haven, Connecticut this morning, about 100 protesters staged a sit-in at Yale Law School to protest the Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. This is following another woman coming forward and accusing Kavanaugh of sexual misconduct dating back to his freshman year at Yale. Kavanaugh is a Yale Law graduate and many of his clerks have come from the school. He's scheduled to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee on Thursday in response to a previous allegation of sexual assault. A new attraction is set to open up at MGM Springfield this week. And a Texas football coach is teaching his team some important lessons off of the field. You're watching 22 News at Noon. You're watching 22 News at Noon. The time is now 12.13, and right now we're currently awaiting a special report from NBC News on that expected firing of Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. We'll go to that as soon as it happens. Cleanup is underway at the site of a train derailment in Iowa that officials say was due to bridge failure. It happened Sunday evening near Alton. Authorities say the Union Pacific train was carrying 95 cars full of sand and soybean. As you see, that, tra uh, that train that is derailed and flipped over. And... Uh, some of which fell into the flooded river beneath the bridge. Officials say it's possible that recent rain and flooding contributed to that derailment. So far, no injuries have been reported. There was a rally in Southern California on Sunday for Puerto Rican residents still rebuilding after last year's devastating Hurricane Maria. Dozens of people marched along Hollywood Boulevard to mark the one-year anniversary of the devastating hurricane and call to help.
Hundreds of people were killed when Hurricane Maria, a Category 4 system, struck the U.S. territory. It destroyed and damaged homes and knocked out power to much of the island. Puerto Rico's governor says tens of thousands of people are still in need of reliable electricity. Those rallying at Sunday's event say basic human needs are not being met. A Texas high school football coach is being called a hero after rescuing a woman stuck in floodwaters. Take a look at this video. Danny Dayarman and his wife were driving when they saw other cars that were stranded after heavy rains pounded North Texas. The football coach didn't stand on the sidelines, but rather he got involved. His wife took out her phone and shot this video you're looking at right now as her husband went to rescue a stranded woman. The water nearly swept him away, but he managed to get his footing and the coach put the woman on his back, as you can see, and started walking to higher ground. He says he didn't do anything special and he hopes it's a lesson his players can learn from. I don't think that I did anything that anybody else wouldn't have done. Hopefully this will be an example for him. Um, you know, because it goes beyond football. Uh, it's about it's about life. The coach also hopes more motorists will listen to the phrase turn around and don't drown. You hear it say that all the time here on 22 News. And now the 22 News Storm Team forecast with meteorologist Nick Bannon. 1216 now, a lot of clouds, but at least we're dry. So if you're thinking about heading to the Big E today for a salute to Springfield Day, go ahead. It's going to be dry. Just make sure you have a jacket on, and it's the type of day that you don't necessarily get away with the long, uh, with the shorts and short sleeves. It's more of a jacket and uh, long pants type of weather. Our 22 new storm team forecast focus then for today, dry and cool with plenty of clouds. Wet weather comes in for tomorrow. Lots of rain and there's going to be wet weather around on Wednesday as well. Although warming temperatures as we head into Wednesday, we could approach 80 by Wednesday and then for the rest of the week near average temperatures uh, and a lot more in the way of dry time. You can see in our clouds and radar all the clouds in the gray that have taken over western Massachusetts. The areas of darkening here, that's areas actually that the sunshine is uh, shining through the clouds. So there are some holes in the clouds. There's also more holes in the clouds developing in Connecticut too. So I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll go from this mostly cloudy sky to at times a few breaks of blue later on today. Uh, just don't get overly excited about the potential for sunshine, but I think there may be a little bit of it. The reason we're getting so much in the way of clouds is because of the wind coming out of the east and northeast. That's coming right off the ocean, dragging in all that moisture, and then it just gets stuck in the form of these clouds over much of southern New England. Our rain for tomorrow is coming from here, though. Uh, bottom left of your screen, it's going to be moving uh, to the north and east as we head through the night tonight, getting to us right about the time you're heading to work and school tomorrow morning. So our skycast, we go from mostly cloudy to partial sunshine. You see some thinning in the clouds here this afternoon. High temperatures struggling to make it into the low 60s, but uh, we're likely to get there. Similar temperatures to what we had yesterday with all the clouds we had yesterday as well. We go into tonight, partly cloudy at first, and then skies turn mostly cloudy through the night so that by between about 5 and 8 o'clock, we'll see the arrival of wet weather starting earliest to the west and then spreading east through the day. So by 10, we're all dealing with rain and the rain may start light, but it's actually going to pick up in intensity as we go through the morning tomorrow. The morning will not be as uh, heavy of a rain as it will be in the afternoon. The rain really starts to increase its intensity in the afternoon more so than the morning. Uh, oranges, yellows, and even some reds for the second half of the day. That indicates some heavier rain around. And the heaviest of the rain will last into the early to mid-evening tomorrow. And then there's still going to be some leftover showers in the late evening and overnight. Just won't be as constantly raining as it will be earlier in the day. But bottom line, it's an umbrella and rain jacket type of day for us here tomorrow. We head into Wednesday. Not as wet for Wednesday, but a few occasional showers. A little bit of sunshine, much warmer and more humid. We'll also give us the possibility for a few thunderstorms later in the day. So a sun cloud mix of the afternoon, more in the way of clouds for the first half of the afternoon and not much sun, and then some breaks of sun later in the afternoon, but high temperatures only in the low 60s. Becoming cloudy tonight, rain arrives near or just after sunrise, 46 to 50, and then a rainy day tomorrow, the heaviest of which comes in the afternoon and early evening, 62 to 66. Here's our Twine to New Storm Team seven-day forecast. Wednesday, uh, not as wet, but occasionally some showers 
and even a few stronger thunderstorms later in the day. But notice how much warmer it is than basically any other day in the week. Almost 80 degrees on Wednesday. Thursday, partly sunny. We're back to dry again, but also back to the low 70s. And then another chance for just a couple showers or sprinkles Friday morning with a little sun later in the day up to 69 degrees on Friday. As far as your weekend looks, at this point it's 50-50, with Saturday being the pick of the weekend with sun and clouds and 71 degrees. Then the chance for a few showers on Sunday. Not a lot of rain on Sunday, but enough to mention it this early in the seven-day forecast up to about 70 on Sunday. Don't forget for the latest weather information as we track the arrival of tomorrow's soaking rain, you can get that on our free 22 News Storm Team weather app. MGM Springfield will be opening its new state-of-the-art movie theater this week, and some movie patrons were able to get a preview this weekend. 22 News reporter Tashani Whitlow gives us a look at the latest addition to the resort casino. The state's first full-scale casino now has a state-of-the-art movie theater to match. Residents from all over western Massachusetts flock to opening week at MGM Springfield's new Regal Theater. It's located on the second level of the resort, accessible by elevator or escalator. The state-of-the-art movie theater holds 674 people and features seven auditoriums with reclining seats like this one and it's accessible to all. The casino's movie theater officially opens Thursday, but Sunday, moviegoers were treated to $3 movies and snacks. What else are you gonna eat while you're here? Popcorn. In addition to your traditional movie food, the theater offers its patrons with a palate something extra. We also have a full menu with entrees, appetizers, and desserts, as well as a full bar, so you can come and have dinner and a movie when you come to see a movie at this theater. And there's plenty of lounge space to relax while you wait for your movie to start. 22 News met this construction worker from Belchertown who was eager to show his family his hard work. Just kind of wanted to see the fruits of our labors, you know. And it's nice to see uh, the accomplishment that we did. Part of the proceeds from the ticket sales this week will benefit Square One and Head Start, a federally funded early childhood education program. In Springfield, to Shawnee Whitlow, 22 News. Okay. Hey. California was supposed to be a temporary.
You're watching 22 News at Noon. President Trump says things are going well with North Korea a year after deriding the country's leader at the United Nations. The president arriving at the UN this morning for his second general assembly, a year after using the venue to blast Kim Jong-un as rocket man, saying this morning their relationship has come a long way. Moving very well. The relationships are very good with North Korea. Uh, we have many things in store. It looks like we'll have a second summit quite soon. As you know, Kim Jong-un wrote a letter, a beautiful letter, and uh, asking for a second meeting, and we will be doing that. Secretary Pompeo will work that out in the immediate future. It looks like it's moving very, very well. The president says there's been tremendous progress on North Korea from one year ago. Long Meadows' Bryn Cartelli was the winner of last season's The Voice, and tonight the singing competition returns for a new season right here on 22 News. Jennifer Hudson's back, and so is Kelly Clarkson, along with Adam Levine and Blake Shelton. NBC's Mark Barger has a preview of what viewers can expect. So we can get closer, closer. One super talented team made Coach Kelly Clarkson a champ in her very first season on The Voice. She was hard to be around before. I'm a big diva. But now I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I know where this is going, brother. What are you talking about? Go sit down. You no. lose. You lose. Sit down. Don't look at him. Blind auditions begin for the new season tonight. Jennifer Hudson's back in the fold, and everyone's trying to keep country singers away from Blake Shelton. Literally, y'all, all he do is turn his chair around and he says, and he gets some. Come on. That's it. That's not true. What's the strategy that? is that? not true. I am, I am talking to I'm him te shoes. telepathically. I'm singing you songs. In fact, the former American Idolist used that strategy on some non-country singers as well. I don't think it's fair that, it, that you're even on this show. Oh, because you, you, have an edge. You're, you have an edge against us. It's you not think? fair. That's like you've already, it's like we're amateurs at this and you're a pro. I have got to want to it's potential future pros the coaches will be listening for tonight. Go with your gut. You just don't know. There's just no way to know. So you got to kind of go with your instincts in that moment. And also, watch out for Clarkson. Now I can only talk to her at certain times of the day. Yeah, only between the hours of 2 and 6. Yeah. Otherwise, nope. Artists hope they get a yes from coaches starting tonight. Mark Barker, NBC News. And you can catch The Voice right here on 22 News starting at 8 o'clock tonight. 1228 now. I'd go ahead and uh, do some yard work today because Tuesday and Wednesday are wet days, especially Tuesday. Uh, and then Thursday is another dry day. But uh, maybe getting it done today before the rain comes in would be a good idea. I'll update you on how much rain we're expecting as we head into a soaking Tuesday with our 22 New Storm Team rainfall forecast.
You're watching 22 News at Noon. The time right now is 1230 and we're currently awaiting a special report from NBC News on the expected firing of Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. We'll go to that report as soon as it happens. Bill Cosby is back inside a Pennsylvania courtroom right now after being found guilty of sexual assault. The sentencing phase of the case is underway. NBC's Jay Gray has been following the story since the start and is outside the courtroom in Norristown with the latest. <laughs> Supporters and protesters screaming as Bill Cosby walks into the Montgomery County Courthouse. His future and freedom hanging in the balance. If he's sentenced to county or state prison, he will be led out of the courtroom in handcuffs. The possible sentence for Cosby ranges from a maximum of 30 years in prison, 10 for each guilty count of indecent assault, to probation or home confinement and electronic monitoring. I really think it's important that he spends some time behind bars. He's committed the act, he's been convicted of it, and he should do time like everyone else. State guidelines suggest the most likely sentence is one to four years behind bars, but Judge Stephen T. O'Neill is expected to consider several factors, including Cosby's age and health. He may also take into account his lack of public remorse. The judge can go a year more or a year less, depending on aggravating factors or mitigating factors. Cosby has repeatedly denied all of the allegations against him, and his legal team is expected to appeal his conviction. Jay Gray, NBC News, Norristown, Pennsylvania. The gymnast trainer who worked with convicted serial child molester Larry Nasser is scheduled to be in court today. Deborah Van Horn, a former sports medicine trainer, was arrested earlier this month by Homeland Security officials. She's been indicted on one count of second degree sexual assault of a child and will be in court for the first time today in Texas. The Hawaii Volcanoes National Park has reopened four months after Mount Kilauea erupted. Some excited visitors got a chance to attend a soft opening of the park and see how it's changed since May. The park was closed to the public for more than 130 days after lava flow, powerful earthquakes and recent rockfall. Some areas are still considered dangerous. The Agra Museum was the closest you could legally get to Halima'umau and to see the lava lake, but of course that is now very unsafe to be there. The soft opening is part of phase one for the reopen. Phase two will consist of making sure the trails are safe to use. No word yet on when they will reopen. And now the 22 News Storm Team forecast with meteorologist Nick Bannon. 1233 now and it's still mostly cloudy as you can see at the Quabbin Reservoir in Belchertown. Still I'm cautiously optimistic of a few peaks of blue sky here and there this afternoon, but it's still not the tremendously bright day that we've been lacking uh, lately. There are a few breaks in the clouds starting to open up in far eastern Franklin County and also a few just as you're heading down 91 into Enfield, there's a few more breaks of sun in Connecticut. Some of these may try to work into western Massachusetts here on the early side of the afternoon, but I think we're more likely to get breaks of uh, sunshine later in the afternoon as the sun continues its work and tries to break apart these clouds. The clouds are very stubborn though. They're Coming in off of a, obviously the ocean is wet and it's full of moisture and uh, the wind coming out of the east is just bring, bringing all that moisture into western Massachusetts and showing itself in the form of clouds. So uh, not much is going to change about the wind direction here today to uh, change the fact that we're still expecting a lot of clouds. And then our rain that comes here tomorrow is going to come from here and uh, it's going to be a good soaking for us. We don't exactly need the rain because of how much rain we had last week. But I think the amount that we're going to see is fairly manageable, but there'll be some heavier batches of it. So from a mostly cloudy early afternoon to some partial sunshine later in the afternoon, high temperatures only going to reach the low 60s in Hamden County today, although upper 50s in our western hills up and down the Pioneer Valley. Uh, generally low 60s though. 58 Middlefield, 61 Northampton, Amherst and Belchertown today. And in central Franklin County, mostly low 60s, including orange, but just upper 50s for you in Charlemont and some partial sun toward the end of the afternoon as possible in the Berkshires as well, although certainly more clouds than sun is the best way to sum things up for today. Tonight becoming cloudy. If we see any breaks of sun, they fill back in with more clouds overnight. 
46 to 50. Then our day tomorrow is a cloudy one completely. And then rainy almost from the time you wake up all the way through the day. Heaviest of the rain though comes in, in the afternoon into the early evening. That's where there may be some minor street flooding with some uh, downpours that may just be a bit too much for some of the storm drains. But for the most part, the rain should be uh, uh, light enough to handle 62 to 66. As far as rainfall amounts, Here's what our rainfall forecast is suggesting. And just to get an idea here, uh, the range is going to be, as I start this over again, our graphic computer having a little trouble, ranging between about one to two inches of rain for most of us here in western Massachusetts. Uh, last week, when we had that big downpour, we had two to four inches of rain, so roughly half of that although still significant. Uh, Wednesday, a few scattered showers and possibly a thunderstorm or two. Highs near 80 and mostly cloudy skies. And then as we head through the day on Thursday, uh, we're back to dry again, partly sunny and also back to near average 71. Couple showers Friday morning, otherwise partly sunny 69. A dry Saturday looks to be the pick of the weekend at this point, 71 degrees. And then a few more showers possible on Sunday with highs near 70. Meteorologist Brian Lapis will update you on the timing and any changes to the intensity of tomorrow's rainfall on 22 News starting at 5. And don't forget, before then, you can always get the latest weather information on our free 22 News Storm Team weather app. In world news, investigators say the pilot of a plane that crashed last year into an Australian shopping mall killing him and four American passengers didn't properly check the aircraft before takeoff. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau said the Australian pilot radioed Mayday seven times in 10 seconds, but did not explain the emergency before the plane plunged into the Melbourne Mall in 2017 in February, moments after takeoff, causing all of that smoke and fire you see right there. The investigators final report said the plane was in full nose left position instead of a neutral position before takeoff and the pilot did not detect the mistake. During a news conference today, the chief commissioner of the Australian Transport Safety Bureau said the accident could have been prevented if a checklist had been followed by the pilot. Japan successfully launched an H-2B rocket carrying a cargo vessel to be delivered to the International Space Station. The liftoff took place at a space center in Japan on Sunday after four postponements due to various factors. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency said the unmanned cargo ship separated from the rocket minutes after liftoff. One thing the vessel is carrying is a capsule developed to bring back experiment samples from the ISS to Earth. It's scheduled to arrive at the ISS on Thursday. 
and Pope Francis is in Latvia right now. The Pope was treated to a musical performance by Latvian children after he arrived in the capital city today. His arrival marked the third day of his four day trip to the Baltic countries. The Pope's visit to the Baltic nations is to mark the 100th anniversary of their independence and to encourage the Catholic faith. Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia saw five decades of Soviet imposed religious repression. And crews are continuing to clean up in Ottawa, Canada. After two tornadoes touched down on Friday, you see the debris scattered everywhere. The twister snapped trees, tossed cars, and destroyed dozens of homes. As of Saturday, Sunday night, rather, 36,000 people were still without power. Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson said it could be days before power is fully restored, adding that the damage resembled a war scene. Dozens of people were injured, but no deaths were reported. In consumer news, a satellite music giant is buying one of the biggest music streaming services. Cirrus SM is buying, XM that is, is buying Pandora in a deal worth about $3.5 billion. The satellite radio company already owns about 15% of Pandora, and it says the two companies will maintain their separate brands and services. In a statement, Cirrus XM said in part, there would be no immediate change in the listener offerings. Cirrus has about 36 million subscribers and Pandora has about 70 million monthly listeners through its free and paid music streaming. The CEO of uh, Weight Watchers International, Mindy Grossman, appeared on the Today Show this morning to announce the company's rebranding to be known simply as WW. The move is in part to expand the company's focus beyond just weight loss to encompass overall healthy living. Along with a new logo and name, the company's eliminating all artificial ingredients from its products and starting a new program next month called Wellness Wins, which rewards members for working towards healthier habits. Victims of Hurricane Florence are wading through their options right now on how to pay for repairs to property damage. NBC's Chris Clackman reports that depending upon the extent of the damages may get help from their mortgage company. As is the case with the aftermath of all natural disasters, Hurricane Florence victims are dumping what's destroyed and preparing for the verdict from their insurance company. Oh, the mitigators just left. They said, yeah, you're going to have to gut the whole house. Victims are also faced with paying for repairs the insurance won't. And that's where a home equity loan might help. For many people, it's going to be a lifeline uh, that they'll need to borrow from in order to get those repairs completed. But bank rate senior analyst Greg McBride says just don't expect too much. The likely circumstance where people are going to be able to borrow from their home equity to fix storm da damage uh, are, is going to be things that don't significantly impact the current value of the home. By coincidence, a new bank rate survey taken before Florence hit found most homeowners saying home repair or improvement are the best reasons for <laughs> dipping into a home equity loan. Other experts say private property insurance should be the first stop, then try a federal loan through FEMA as ways to get natural disaster damage repaired. Chris Clackham, NBC News.
Health Watch this afternoon, parents and pediatricians should help teen drivers stay safe. The American Academy of Pediatrics says the number of teens who die behind the wheel appear to be rising. The group suggests doctors make a point of counseling teens about seatbelts and risk of driving while drunk or on medication. Parents can help by spending more time with their teenagers driving and having kids experience a variety of driving conditions. The AAP also says crash risk increase for teens who are driving with young passengers. Food and Drug Administration is disputing a recent study that suggested women with silicone breast implants are at a higher risk for certain rare diseases. Haley Hernandez reports that the agency cites problems with the study and has called a meeting for next year to review all available data. MD Anderson Cancer Center says they have found silicone breast implants are associated with an increased risk of some rare diseases and cancers. So some of the rare diseases that we saw were uh, lupus, uh, Sjogren's, autoimmune diseases uh, that have been previously shown. Dr. Mark Clemens reviewed data from women with smooth silicone implants from two manufacturers, the only companies in existence where data was available at the time of the study. He reiterated the FDA says implants are safe. But according to the study, one group of patients had illnesses like rheumatoid arthritis and melanoma twice as frequently as the general population. Silicone implants were uh, associated with common diseases and some rare diseases. Uh, it wasn't possible to say who was most at risk, but this is important information for physicians to know because if they do encounter one of these very rare occurrences, that they anticipate it and they know how to send the patient for further evaluation. That was Haley Hernandez reporting. Research suggests breastfeeding may help babies avoid gaining too much weight. A new study followed about 2,500 infants born between 2009 and 2012. Breastfed babies had a lower body mass index and were less likely to have excessive weight gain before their first birthday. Experts say more research is needed about how infant feeding practices could prevent childhood obesity. And children who see their mom smoke pot may be more likely to try it sooner than other kids. New research from Harvard suggests children whose mothers use marijuana tend to try the drug two years before their peers. The early marijuana use was higher in non-Hispanic, non-black children. Kids who smoke marijuana may be at a greater risk for trouble thinking and concentrating. Car accidents are the leading cause of death in children between the ages of 1 and 13. This week is Child Passenger Safety Week, which aims to remind parents how to keep their children safe in the car. Nearly half of all car seats are used incorrectly. That's why the Amherst Police Department is hoping to help. They've certified child passenger safety technicians who can expect and install safety restraints. Many other local police departments will also help you install your child's car seat.
You're watching 22 News at Noon. Tonight on 22 News starting at 5, it's a growing problem that impacts more people than you might think. 22 News is working for you with what's being done to help compulsive hoarders. And the storm team is tracking another round of rain on Tuesday. It's all coming up tonight on 22 News starting at 5. Now to a story about some adorable little creatures that are facing a serious danger. Baby sea turtles, they hatch on the beach and then make their way to the ocean, except sometimes they end up going the wrong way, which can be a deadly mistake. And it all has to do with light. NBC's Ann Thompson shows us how a group of scientists is helping to point them in the right direction. It is an arduous journey to the sea. For baby sea turtles no bigger than the palm of your hand, avoiding predators like birds and crabs to grow up in the water. What are their chances of survival? It's probably less than one in a thousand. Make it to adulthood. But first, the hatchlings have to get out of the nest. And most do that when the stars come out. Florida biologist Tanya Long says darkness is their shield. It's the light that they're really looking for. They're using the ambient light, the celestial light from the moon, as their cue to figure out where the ocean is. And take two out. This night, Long releases the stragglers left behind in nests on Florida's east coast. You made it. <laughs> but the hatchlings can get confused by the light we make with deadly results. Many of them go the wrong way, end up in parking lots and pools and in harm's way. Now, with penalties paid by BP from the Gulf oil spill, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation is putting in turtle-friendly lighting in hotels and condo complexes along Florida's coasts, in many cases mandated by local law. Ninety percent of America's sea turtles nest on the beaches of the Sunshine State. Light pollution has been reduced and or eliminated on many priority beaches. In some cases, disorientation has gone from 50 percent to zero. White lights are now amber and focused on the ground, not the beach, to keep the little ones headed in the right direction and take that one in a thousand chance at growing up. Ann Thompson, NBC News, Cocoa Beach, Florida. And now, the 22 News Storm Team Forecast with meteorologist Nick Bannon. So as we head into tonight, skies becoming cloudy, especially by midnight. 
and rain doesn't get here until near sunrise tomorrow morning or at least by mid morning. So increasingly wet for the morning, but dry for tonight. 46 to 50 for overnight lows and then it's a rainy day tomorrow. Heaviest of the rain comes in the afternoon into the early evening. Highs 62 to 66. While Friday is sorry, while Wednesday is not at and let me just start again. Why not? All right, that does it for us this afternoon, and we hope you can join us back here for 22 News at 5. As always, we have the latest news and weather updates online at WWLP.com. Have a good afternoon.